Welcome back to Algo Trading Series using PineScript from Market Secrets. In this episode, we are going to see how to modify our scripts without coding. So a cool feature about PineScript is that we can create custom inputs very easily to change the parameters of our strategies and indicators. We have discussed about this in detail in none of our earlier episodes, but let's take it a step further now. Take a look at any indicator offered in TradingView by default. So I'm not talking about the indicators that we are creating. I'm talking about the indicators that is provided by default in TradingView. You can see that it is very easy to change or modify any parameters that is available for any of the indicators, be it the you know time period, length, or even colors. So we can achieve the same thing for our studies and also our strategies that we create using the scripts. So we can do that very easily with the Pine script using the input function. In this episode, we can take the strategy that we have created in the previous episode and we can use the input function to make it an adaptable strategy with custom inputs. So the first step here is to get the user input for the long and short triggers or thresholds. So in the previous episodes, we have created a strategy which will trigger the trades if a stock drops by 3%. But the thing here is we have hard coded it. We have hard coded the value of 3% indirectly by passing the value 0.97 and 1.03. In this particular episode, instead of hard coding it, we are going to make this a custom input. So user can define what is this percentage level dynamically in the chart window itself. That's what we are trying to accomplish. So for that, we need to add two more lines of code. So let's do that first. So I'm going to create a long trigger variable and I'm going to get the custom input using the built-in input function. And you need to have a title for this. So the title for this particular input would be percentage change for short entries and you need to mention the type so the type of this particular input would be float so i'm going to mark it as input dot float and then you need to give default value default value in this case is three because that is what we used in the previous episode so i'm just copying it and paste it here again and i'm going to mark the sharp trigger here and uh, this is the percentage change for the long entries and the rest of the values would remain just the same so let's go through these parameters once again so this title this indicates that the text that the user sees when they're trying to change the value of a particular parameter and the type we are letting the trading view know that the kind of the value to accept so since the user could be entering any number such as you know 1.5 2.5 we have used the float variable here and again this last parameter is your default value which we have set it to 3 like i mentioned earlier user will be inputting the value for example 3 or 5 percentage or 4.5 percentage but we need to convert this value into percentage change. For example, if user inputs 5, we need to have the value 0.95 and 1.05. If user inputs the value 3, it should be 0.97 and 1.03. So we need to be flexible. So for that, we need to add two more lines of code. So let's do it first. So for long trigger, so we are using the self-assignment operator. We are taking on minus long trigger by 100 so we're just changing it so same thing should be done for the short trigger instead of minus we need to use plus so now we need to change our if statements to make use of the newly created variables based on the user inputs rather than the previously hard-coded values so i'm taking this as my long trigger and I'm going to take this as my short trigger. So this is how your 
new code would look like. So let's add this to the chart now. So if you click on here, the settings button, you'll be able to see both the input parameters that we have created, like percentage change for short entries and percentage change for long entries. That was the title that we have provided. So by default, it will have the default values three, but if you want the values five, then you can set it as well. Likewise, if you want to set two different values for short side and long side, you can do that as well. So if you look at the results, right? So this is the performance summary. So this is your net profit. And if you change these thresholds, right? These values will also change. So I'm just changing it to four. So if you see here, right? This is automatically changing. So you can easily back this for different set of combinations as well. See, if it, right now it is a negative. So like this, right? You can play around these parameters easily from the chart window itself instead of using the hard coded values. So that's the beauty of this particular option. So this is why we need to have this option. So now let's take this a step further. What if, if you want to short a stock, for example, short bank nifty if nifty falls by certain percentage well that's simple as well we need to use the securities function that we have learned in earlier episodes here and we need to use that and replace just two lines of code so instead of getting the open and close price directly you have to use the securities function so security and you can use nifty and you can take the daily closing price so like this you need to do the same thing for open parameter as well so now instead of getting actual price of the stock which is open right now we are getting nifty's price and using it as a base condition to trigger the trades now let's add to the uh, chart so now if you look at the chart, this newly added chart is completely different from the existing chart or the chart that was plotted earlier using the bank nifty value. See how steep this goes. So do you see the difference here? Likewise, right? This entire chart is plotted based on the nifty values. Likewise, your trade results will also vary because you are now trading using the signal from the nifty in bank nifty so obviously these results will also be different from the earlier results so you can use this as a base and play around to arrive at an optimal strategy looks exciting isn't it with PineScript, the options to develop more and more is limitless so do give it a try with this, we have come to end of today's episode. If you have any queries, feedbacks, or comments about this episode, leave it down in the comment section. We'll be happy to answer and address it. Also, hit the like button if you have liked this video and share it with your friends if you find it useful. Your engagement is important for us. That is our motivating factor. So please do like the video if you li really like it. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video or conduct a live session. Also, check out our website, www.marketsecrets.in to check out our various offerings, data feeds, and learning series. I thank you once again for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.